An Australian pastor named Herb Kirsten claims Chinese historians recorded the astronomical signs of Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection that we read in the Gospels. Let's take a look. If you are traveling in an arid landscape with your friends a long time ago, and you're using something in the sky to guide you, would a star be more useful to you? Or would a comet be more useful to you? Which of these two heavenly phenomena would be more useful from a navigation point of view? I put it to you that perhaps a comet, because it has a head and a tail. So this subject matter is actually really important to the question of Christian validity, because one of the major problems of the Christian proposal is that Yahweh does not seem to be a global God. He, he seems to be a regional God only spoken of in the Middle East. There are no texts that say his name other than those which derive from the Middle East. Uh, there's no mention of his laws we find in the Torah, uh, specifically found elsewhere in the world at that time. Much of this points to Yahweh being a regional phenomenon, a creation of that culture. But if the Chinese historians recorded astronomical signs of Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection, like we read in the Gospels, then that is interesting. That would be definitely something to look into a little bit further. The Chinese astronomers were far more advanced than their Western counterparts. The Chinese, the Chinese astronomers, according to NASA, kept very meticulous records about comets when they appeared, when they disappeared. And they, these records were called comet atlases. And a typical comet atlas looks something like this. Doesn't mean much to an American or an Australian or an Englishman, but to the Chinese people, this is a detailed record of when a comet appeared in the sky and how long it lasted and when it appeared. On the 9th of March, 5 BC, this record appeared in the astronomy records of the Book of the Han Dynasty. And translated into English, it reads in the second month of the second year of Yanping, the comet was out of Altair. Altair is a star. This comet came out of a star and it lasted for more than 70 days. And it is said comets appear to signify the old being replaced by the new. Altair, the sun, the moon and the five stars are in movement to signify the beginning of a new epoch, the beginning of a new year, a new month and a new day. This is dated 9th of March, 5 BC. That's Altair. It's in the constellation of Aquila. It's the brightest star in the constellation of Aquila. And the Chinese astronomers are saying, on the 9th of March, 5 BC, this comet appeared out of, seemingly appeared out of this star and it lasted for more than 70 days. The appearance of this comet undoubtedly symbolizes change, they said. The extended appearance of the comet for more than 70 days indicates that this is of great importance. And there's the reference on the screen. Okay, so for the astronomical sign of Jesus' birth, he's saying it was actually a comet, I guess. The Bible says the wise men who came to visit Jesus Christ, who was to be born in Bethlehem, they said, we've seen his star in the east and we've come to worship him. The wise men thought it was a star. The Chinese astronomers who knew nothing about this thought it was a comet. To them, it looked like a comet. To the wise men, it looked like a star. This record is dated 31 AD, and it's in the history of the latter Han Dynasty, and there's the reference. And it says, summer, fourth month of the year on the day of Ren Wu, the imperial edict reads, yin and yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and the moon were eclipsed. The signs of all, the sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. They knew nothing about Jesus. And this is dated 31 AD. 
They knew nothing about Jesus Christ, but in their soul, in their spirit, they felt that this sudden eclipse of the sun unexpectedly meant that the sins of people were pardoned and had been placed on one man. That's amazing, isn't it? And then it goes on to say, the eclipse on the day of Gui Hai, man from heaven died. How did the Chinese people know this? There in China, Jesus Christ was being crucified in Jerusalem. They knew nothing about it. But in their records, when they saw this eclipse, these imperial astronomers wrote, man from heaven has died. Then three days later, there was, an eclipse, there was a halo around the sun, 360 degree rainbow halo, three days later. During the reign of Emperor Guangwu on the day of Bin Ying, of the fourth month of Yanwu, a halo, a rainbow, encircled the sun three days later. So, folks, here is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't know what they were writing. They were simply recording what they saw, not knowing what it meant. And so here, folks, to start off this amazing message tonight, we have three evidences where the Chinese astronomers, unknowing to them, pinpointed the year of Christ's birth, the year of his death, and three days later, his resurrection. And I hope if you're watching, I have now got your attention, because this is the type of evidence that we're going to present, new to Western ears. Here, a problem arises that we need to address. He cites the history of the latter Hans dynasty, volume one. I need to delve into this. I don't know any Chinese. It would be really hard to delve into this manuscript tradition of uh, the history of the latter Hans dynasty. One would need to do so in order to give any credence to this text. Um, it says, he cites, and I'll put this in the description, history of the latter Hans dynasty, volume one, Chronicle of Emperor Wang Wu, seventh year. So this all needs to be looked into heavily before we put any credence into uh, what Pastor Kirsten is claiming here. An irrational thing to do, an unreasonable thing to do would be to hear this and throw up your hands and say, oh, more evidence of Jesus and just take it as gospel, right? We don't want to do that. We want to look at our sources critically, double check them, call people out on their bullshit and uh, think critically. That's what we're all about. That's what we should be aiming at. 